we had eight Czech entries this year. It was very, very hard to choose. But the, the Devil's Workshop, hot off the press this month from Portobello Books and winner of the 2013 English Pen Award for Outstanding Writing in Translation, is unlike anything you'll ever read, ever. And it will stay with you for a very long time to come. And it's proof for me that some of the most interesting writing and unusual writing, thought-provoking writing, today comes from the former East. It's a privilege to welcome... Jochen Toppel, one of the great dissident writers before the Velvet Revolution and a leading prose writer and poet in the Czech Republic today. Jochen. <laughs> nice to see you. <laughs> now, um, when, when I call you... And, and don't yes, worry. Thank you. I have to you, know, very you know my English is poor, so I'll be yeah. very slow. Uh -huh. I promise. Okay. Yeah. And um, if you want me to repeat something, or maybe Teresa can even translate, maybe. Um, just let's see how we go. Okay. Um, Yakum, I can look into your eyes. Okay. <laughs> we'll, yes. we'll try and make it work. Yes. <laughs> okay. Now look, when I call you. Um, a Samizdat poet or a writer. Do you feel proud of that? Is that all of past, all gone, finished? When you are a Samizdat poet, you know, you will, you will, it will, you know, uh, <clears throat> I remember everything, so uh, I don't think I'm changed. You know, when you, when you write in the time of uh, Samizdat, it's the era of communism, and you are part of this so-called underground, it's only situation, it's only political situation. But I am sure that my writing is the same. So you don't write differently from underground, overground? Absolutely. No? Especially here in British Library or where I am, because yesterday I was in Amsterdam, before I was in Dublin in the Irish Library. So I think it's overground. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, probably here in the British Library they've got books of yours from before as well. Mm -hmm. So that mm -hmm. would be interesting for you to find out. We can ask um, Janet. Because I do not write a science fiction, right, from future. <laughs> I think every writer writes from the memory. Graham Greene once told that the memory is one of the most important things for a writer. Tell us what you do write. Huh? What, what, what do you write today? You what? write novels, poetry, well, films, Well, I think the biggest, the biggest thing for me is to write novel. It's uh, I don't know. That. It's challenge. It's something. It's 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 not easy. You know now because I have no time. I am working and so on. I have children, small children. My parents are all blah blah. So I start to I start to write short stories, but it's a problem <laughs> because because you know I couldn't believe in 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 short story because after Bunyan. Uh, Ivan Bunin, after Anton Pavlovich Chekhov, Isaac Babel, you know, all these giants, or Isaac Bashevi Singer. So, short story, it's, you know, you should write novel, long book, and you should, you, you, you think about suicide, you know, you are alone, depressed, drunk sometimes, and it's, 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 not now, and it's part of, <laughs> it's part of your life. Uh, this sorry, is a maybe short... I'm too no, no, pathetic. No, you know, you're, no, you're it's fantastic. It's because, because I have a small problem to understand your English. You know, okay. when, when, I, when I have reading in, in, in Hungary or Amsterdam, it's okay. But here, I am talking too much. You know, I'm talking Just too much. Just keep talking. It's, don't it's give fantastic you time for what you're saying. More complicated questions. Sorry. You don't need questions from me. I can uh, guarantee. But we are a serious people. You know, it's not. You know. We can laugh. They're laughing. Um, now look, this is a short novel. Is that easier? Yes. Uh, short. My first novel, Sister, it was published in the United States. It has 600 pages. And it's, I don't know, 12, 12 years ago. So I feel like this animal, uh, help me, lives in the river and eating uh, wood. Yeah. Bobber. Be beaver. Yes, exactly. You know. So, and I am making from from the whole trees. I am making only one. Uh, yes. So, first book, five, six hundred pages. The last one. Very short. Because. By comparison. Mm, 
Well, that, that but one do you is... understand my English? Yeah, oh, absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> don't worry about it. It's don't be polite. It... I, have, I, have no, no. I have no education. You know, so... <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to yeah. do my best. No, I feel, yeah, you're I feel like being brilliant. here in England, mm. I feel like Jimmy Hawkins in the pirate ship. Who's Jimmy Hawkins? I'm talking about English, British literature. Oh. Oh. Robert Louis Stevenson, The yeah. Island of Treasures. Mm. So I feel like this small boy, Jimmy Hawkins. Yakim, let's talk, though, about this amazing book. Yes. Mm -hmm. This book, you've got to believe me, is an amazing book. Do you like, do you like my book? We loved it. <laughs> every single... Uh, per, happy every, to be here. I lo <laughs> we really loved it. Mm -hmm. I mean, where are my judges? Didn't we just love this book? <laughs> Make the man feel better about it. <laughs> it was, it's an amazing book. Let's talk about this book, okay? It's like LSD It's LSD. Let's give you some more literary <laughs> LSD. I'm going to take you out of your misery briefly to explain what this book is about. I'll, I'll give a short description of the book, okay? And then we'll talk a little bit about it. Please. Just to give you some a breathing yes. space here. Now... <laughs> It's very, the book, you know, it's comedy, but it's very sad, so... It's, it is very sad, but it's very funny, too. Mm -hmm. um, and who would have thought it could be so funny? It is about, it's about concentration camps. Um, this is a book in two locations and two parts. It's set partly in the Czech Republic, partly in Belarus. You could not imagine two grimmer locations, because... The, I'm not saying the Czech Republic is grim, <laughs> but um, Theresienstadt, Teretzin, which is where um, half the book takes place, is, as we all know, one of the great um, awful monuments, the ghetto Terezin. And then it takes pa pa um, place partly in Belarus, in Minsk as well, where, as we also know, um, but we don't know enough about how many thousands of people were killed there. Um, and this book is about a young man who grows up in Terezin, Theresienstadt, and in the modern times, um, he gathers together groups of um, young people from all over the world who come to um, this place to search for information about their grandparents who died um, in the ghetto. He, set up, he sets up a commune um, as an alternative place of remembrance. And they have Kafka t-shirts. They produce a ghetto pizza. Um, things like this is where it is um, very funny. They have therapy sessions for all these young people. And this new project is, what is, re is regarded as very unwelcome by the official Theresienstadt um, tourist um, memorial people. Um, and the camp is then marked for demolition, and um, one of the survivors sends, uh, begins this campaign to, to, uh, to save it. And then there's a crackdown, and um, the authorities bulldoze it. The narrator flees to Minsk, and with the aid of two, two more young people, he t all he takes with him is the key to a safe deposit box and a USB stick, storing the contact data of rich Holocaust survivors. So, and these are meant to be funders of this new project in Minsk. I mean, it's, it's an extraordinary topic. What on earth made you choose this bold, provocative, difficult topic <coughs> for, for in, in a way, a comic so novel. I was, I'm thinking that I was working about 20 years on this book. 20 years? To, uh, yes, yeah. and uh, maybe, um, um, and especially from the year 1989, you know, the time of East European revolutions, I spent never-ending time in Ukraine, in, in Poland, in, in Slovakia, in Belarusia, in Romania, in, in East Europe, or so-called East Europe. And everywhere I was, uh, me I had meetings with these demons, you know, and uh, it became obsession, mm -hmm. some sort of obsession. And you know, uh, I think it's typical for every writer: your tema, your topic, must become obsession. And I'm waiting for the, for books ten years, five years, mm -hmm. and when it's still here, I'm trying to find time to, to write it down. So this book about ghosts or demons, of course, and when you were talking about Theresienstadt, you mentioned this these young people. It was the biggest shock for me. At the beginning, I was thinking, oh my God, I'm still thinking about war, and it's uh, maybe I'm sick and so on. Then I was 
traveling into Theresienstadt and I, I was, was making a TV reportage and so on, then I, I, was, I saw there are some people, mostly young people, this, uh, you know, um, um, this uh, free, freaks, you know, freak, and I, I find they are the third or fourth generation of Holocaust. You know. mm. and then I was looking into the books and it really exists, sort of sickness. So it was the beginning. Mm -hmm. Then I, then I, and I really was in Belarusia, looking for it. It's not long, you know. No. So, but there's a lot in it. There are so many people here. <laughs> you don't need, to, don't need to look at them. It's just you and me. It's just you mm -hmm. and me. Um, what I mean, in in the end, are you criticizing the, if you like, the the, the Holocaust industry, the tourist? Well, what, 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 well, is, what do you find? I am making, you know, I'm, you know, I'm trying to make some some jokes, you know, and I write about this industry with uh, black humor, but. Mm, I am not criticizing. I, I don't know what to, what to think about. You do you know? think we should Maybe still this is the best way. You know? Do you think we should still like go to visit Like to make Disneyland these from it. You know? Sorry. No, keep going. Mm -hmm. mm. I mean, we should still go it's, to these it's places. In, it's because, you know, I am from Prague. And in Prague, the uh, one of the icons or, or mascot or fetish of Prague is a Franz Kafka. Franz Kafka t-shirt. And uh, these people in Theresienstadt, they have this idea to make T-shirt with Theresienstadt, just to, to make another kitsch from it. And I was shocked, and oh my, why? Then I was thinking, why not? You know, maybe, you know, it's, it's not easy. If you have, for example, ghetto pizza in Krakow, you know, it's it's brilliant. It's black well, and it's bleak it's, and it's the, the book is full of it. But I am not really criticizing. I don't know what to do with this. Mm. But it's 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 an absolutely wonderful book, and it really it makes you laugh. But my God, does it make you cry as well? It really does. Now we're going to hear a reading um, of this book, um, and we have somebody to read an extract for us. Uh, Sarah Sanders is going to come and read for us. Um, it's. A reading from The Devil's Workshop, and it's by Jachim Toppel. It's translated by Alex Zucker, and it's published by wonderful Portobello Books. It's been nominated by the Czech Centre. Sarah. You're going to read a little bit in Czech? In you want Czech, to? First, okay. Short, short, short part. First, okay. Just to show you the beautiful language of Czech people. A to jsem jak těživ neviděl. Z vlhké země k nebi tričí komíny, komíny vesnických domků. Všude se tu drápou z mlhy. A kusy zdí rozbité schody. Šedé roury komínů jsou všude kolem, jak stěžně hřbitova lodí. Ale je to hřbito vesnice. Jsem na cestě dlážděné černými kameny, vede k rozvaleným vrátkům mrtvého hospodářství. Pojď, ukážu ti to svý muzejko, říká Alex, ten tichošlápek. Mám ho za zádama. A popadne pro vás, co mi vysí na krku. Na ten jsem zapomněl. Vede mě. Musíme do svahu. Krápe. Jsem rád, že bunda od Alexe má kapuci. Alexovi padají kapky ledového deště na ostříhanou hlavu. Tohle je chatyň, povídá. Takových vesnic tu byly stovky, tisíce, ne jako u vás. Šlo by vyvraždit ty slovany, jo, tady to zkoušeli. Vyvraždili jich akorát 300 tisíc. Jenomže o tom se u vás na západě neví. A proč se to zametlo pod koberec? Proč se o tom dodnes držej huby? Aha! Protože je to dávno. Povídá mu docela normálně, protože mi teď smyčka vysí kolem krku volně. Neškrtí to. Ale houby, vyjekne Alex, to se zametlo. Ty stovky tisíc upálených, protože tomu šéfovali Germáni, ale za žolt tu zabíjeli rusové, ukrajinci, litevci a dnes se o tom mlčí, protože nikdo nechce nasrat Putina. Chápeš? Kývnu. Děsný, říkám. K vám pořád přes půl Evropy courali ty zhejčkaný hledači pryčen, ty hypízácký pičusové a naivní kravky s kreditkama od rodičů a s báječnýma pasama, aby jim lebo pofoukal bebička. Tady ale hledačem úplně každý chápeš a bez kreditky to si piš. Dojde mi, že ty cestičky z černého kamene tu jsou zbudované na schvál. Je to pomník vesnice nebo památník. Já jsem hrdý Bělorus, povídá Alex. 
Mě ale nezajímá jen žrát draníky a čučet na televizi, ani demonstrovat a házet čutrama. Mě zajímá paměť národa. Když ztratíme svou minulost, nebudeme mít ani budoucnost. Nebudeme, chápeš? Jo, Alexi, tohle bych těch považoval za úplně nejlepší, kdybys nebyl. Tohle si myslím, ale neříkám. Nebudeme lidi, chápeš to? Budeme pořád zahrabaný se svýma mrtvýma jak nějaký démoni. Dokážeš to pochopit? Kurva, rozumíš mi? Tahá teď za vás, co mám kolem krku, to mi vadí. Yes, you can. <laughs> it's, a, it's a fantastic Thank you. language. <laughs> okay. An excerpt from near the end of the book. I've never seen anything like it. Chimneys jut towards the sky out of the damp earth. The chimneys of cottages everywhere rising out of the mist. Chunks of walls, broken stairs. Grey chimney pots surround me like masts in a graveyard of ships. But it's a village graveyard. I'm on a road paved with black stones that leads to the flattened gate of a lifeless farmstead. Come, let me show you my little museum, Alex says, the sneak. He's right behind my back. He grabs the rope hanging around my neck. I've forgotten all about it. And we walk, again, him in front, leading me uphill. It's drizzling. I'm glad the jacket Alex gave me has a hood. Drops of icy rain fall on Alex's closely shaven head. This is Katine, he says. There were hundreds of villages like this, thousands, not like in your country. Could they wipe out the Slavs? Well, they tried, here. 300,000 they killed, and nobody in the West knows. How come it got swept under the rug? How come nobody talks about it, huh? It was a long time ago, I say in a normal voice. The noose is pretty tight now. It isn't choking me anymore. Bullshit, Alex yelps. It got swept under the rug because the Germans were in charge. But the ones who did the killing were Russians, Ukrainians, Lithuanians. They did it for money, and everybody keeps quiet about it because nobody wants to piss Putin off. Get it? I nod. Slovak soldiers were stationed in Oktyabrsk, where too many people got slaughtered and burned to even count. About ten of them were my relatives. Awful, I say. All those spoiled bunk seekers coming halfway across Europe so Lebo can blow on their wounds and make it better. All those hippie cunts, naive bitches with their parents' credit cards and fabulous passports. Everyone here's a seeker, get it? And you can bet your ass they don't have any credit. It dawns on me that the paths here are made out of black stone for a reason. It's a monument to the village, or a memorial. I'm proud to be Belarusian, Alex says, but I don't just want to sit around eating janiki and watching TV or protest and throw stones. I want to preserve the nation's memory. If we lose our past, we lose our future. We won't exist, get it? Yes, Alex, I get it. I wish you didn't exist. That's what I think. I don't say it. We can't live like that, bury forever along with our dead like we were some kind of demons. Can you even see what I mean? Do you fucking understand? He tugs on the rope around my neck. That bothers me. Hey, Alex, I need to tie my shoe, okay? I hunch over and look to see if there's a stone I can grab. Nobody's going to tell me what to do anymore. Your shoes are fine, Alex says calmly. Just come on. So I get up and we go. Guess he knows that trick. He lets go of the rope and gives me a friendly slap on the back. He knew the whole time he was choking me. Look, he gestures grandly into the mist. We're going to build a huge car park for buses over there. Kiosks like they have in Auschwitz. Resurface the road. Oh, you think the tourists would like it more if it was bumpy? We could put in a rainforest. They don't have that at home. What do you think? Work, you cunt. You're the expert. Rainforests are nasty, I tell him truthfully. Hot, muggy, terrible weather. The tourists will tell him to go fuck off. Summers here aren't nice like they are in Teredzin. Only now do I notice that all the chimneys have signs on them. Naviki, Navika, 50, 42, 14, 5, 3, 1. Names of the dead and ages of the dead. This just isn't going to do the trick, Alex says, waving his hands around the units. Some boring old-style memorial that won't get the attention of the new Europeans. Look at the Poles and that Katyn of theirs. A step ahead again. They're shooting a movie about it. And what about our Katyn? Nobody's ever heard of it. All of a sudden, Alex jumps up on a wall and shouts, Listen to me, you heroic Poles. The people who got murdered here in Katyn weren't officers who could defend themselves. He jumps down, grabs the rope, and starts talking normally again. They forced the men to run around in a circle till they got tired. 
Then they herded them into a barn and set fire to it. They used another barn for the women and children. Why didn't the people resist? Because Slavs are stupid brutes? No, they just didn't believe it. Right up to the last minute, throwing kids in the fire. Why would someone do that? Nobody thought it would happen until it actually did. The killers had it all worked out. We start walking back towards the tent. I learned something there in Terezin. Alex gives me a punch in the shoulder. Oral history. The most important thing is the story. Authenticity. That's what Lebo said, right? We both stop short. Lebo, that's right. This is Belarus, my friend. No Kafka T-shirts are going to help us here. Thank you. much to Sarah and to Joachim. I mean, these books alone, the ones you've heard already, are a testament to the fact that we must be, um, we must just translate more of this foreign fiction. Was, these are stunning books. I mean, I don't think anybody in Britain could have written that book, for instance, and these are topics that we all need to, to know about. Um, and speaking of which, 